Okay, what I'm doing right now is I am tenderizing some pork chops here. I've laid down uh, some saran wrap that covers over the top of all these pork chops so I don't splat anything anywhere. And uh, again, we're in the poor man's gourmet kitchen, so I don't have all the tools that we need, but I am using a frying pan and I am using a hammer. And the reason why I'm doing this, of course, tenderizing, I want to make the meat softer when I cook it. But what I'm going to do is actually roll these things. I'm going to pork, uh, or that is a stuffed pork chop style of uh, pork chop here. But instead of stuffing it, which would normally traditionally be, you know, cutting them open and filling the inside, I'm going to roll them. And I'm going to stuff it with this boudin here I've got set aside as soon as I get these tenderized enough. And I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to clean them, meaning I'm going to take off all the fat and all the outside layer of the white part that you see here to make the whole thing edible and a little healthy here. A lot of people do eat this stuff, but I prefer to have it off. So that will be the next step after I beat the heck out of them here with the hammer and the skillet. And then we'll move into the rolling and stuffing them with the uh, blue hand. Okay, now I've got everything cleaned here. I've got a big old pile of pork chop slabs here that will be ready to go here in a second. Now, for those of you that don't know what boudin is, it's just this uh, rice mixture, a lot of seasonings. Uh, they call it a blood sausage with the liver. Um, you don't have to use something like this. I, I just got it pre-made. It's a huge process to make it yourself, but I'm just showing you how easy it can be by just getting a few simple ingredients from the grocery store that are already put together, and then you can slap together this gourmet-style dish. Got some green onions here. I've got an egg. I'm going to go ahead and just crack the egg in there. It's going to help this stuff stick together a little bit better when I put it inside the pork chop and roll it up. Go ahead and take these uh, green onions and put that there. I'm going to mix all that up. We're going to lay these all out flat. We're going to load them and start rolling them up and tying them, and we'll put them in the skillet, and we'll go from there. Okay, now here's what you got when we've got them all laid out here and put the boudin in there for the stuffing. Now, what you want to do when you get started is you before you lay them all out, make sure you season both sides. I just go with salt and pepper. That way I keep it simple. Uh, if you want, sometimes a little cayenne to kick it up. But that's what I like about the boudin is the boudin is already spicy. So I'm not too worried about that extra kick because it's already in there. Now, what I've done here is if you can see this string here, every one of these has a string. I lay down a string down the center and the back sides of every one of these before I lay down the pork chop, okay? That way, when I lay everything down here, I can roll it up and tie it in a knot with this string, and that's going to make it a lot more convenient to hold together and cook. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in a skillet, we're going to put a lid on it, and we're going to let them steam. And that's the best way to get these to tenderize the way we want them real nice and soft, not chewy. And then we'll go from there. Just like that. Now I had the help of my beautiful little daughter here so we could uh, double time rolling these up. You can see we just tied it. We put the bigger flap down first and we roll over the smaller. And it just touches right over the top. As you can see all these and you just tie a knot. It's not a big deal. I usually cinch it. The important thing here is that your stuffing's not falling all over the place. And that's why I added an egg to the boudin to help it stick together a little bit better, make it a little more uniform when I roll them up. Tie them up, and now we'll put them in the uh, the skillet, and we'll we'll show you what we're going to do from there. Okay, here we've loaded the skillet. I've got it on a medium heat right now, is all. So you can see right about there. And uh, what I'm going to do is add some beef broth here that I've already pre-brewed. And let's see, I've, I've probably got about two more full cups there. The reason why I'm doing this is, is not just for flavor, but mostly for the steam effect. So I'm going to go ahead and just pour the whole thing in there. And then we're going to cover it. And this is going to take some time. There's nothing fast about the actual cooking time at all. In fact, the most the uh, tedious part about doing this, I mean, because it's pretty easy, the tedious part is uh, tying them up. The whole preparation was pretty quick. It only took about 5 to 10 minutes tops. The cook time is going to probably take close to 45 minutes to an hour. So that's what we're going to watch for, and we'll check it periodically. All right, here we go. I'm 45 minutes into it exactly now. 
and this is how we're looking. We definitely could. It's definitely good, even just the way it is, if I wanted to eat it how it is right now. Uh, a lot of people like color on them, though. They like a little crisp. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and uh, preheat this oven. I'm going to throw it up real hot. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and just throw it on broil. That way, it'll just get some color over the top real quick. And if I was a smart man, you know, I would have used a, a pan. I would have used a skillet that didn't have a plastic handle. But I didn't. <laughs> Crap! So, I'm going to have to transfer all these to a pan uh, or a, a sheet that I can put in the oven. And uh, we'll go from there. Now I've transferred them here to this uh, pan I can throw in the oven. And uh, go ahead and just put the rest of that uh, broth I cooked in, in there. I'm not burning burning these up too bad on the bottom. It leaves a little moisture so it doesn't just completely dry out. I'm going to go ahead and throw this into that broil. And it shouldn't take more than, you know, just a few minutes, two, three minutes to throw a color on them. So that broil and that heat being directly over it, it's so direct that it, uh, it goes by pretty fast. All right, let's see what we've got. It's been about five minutes now. You have some excellent color on these. Oh, that's the way you want it. Perfect. Shut the oven. Oh, yeah. You got a little bit of a darker edge than that uh, light tan color that they had before we put them in. Got a nice little crispy edge. And now we'll prepare a plate. Actually, there is one other thing. I, uh, of course, you've got to cut off all the strings off of every individual piece here before you serve it up, which is what I was planning on doing, but I thought I'd go ahead and uh, throw in a little commentary here and a real quick film about it. Because after I do that, I do want to put some cheese on it. It's just my personal favorite. You can eat them just the way they are. They're great. But I just love cheese. So I'm going to put some mozzarella. I love mozzarella. I put it on a lot of dishes. A lot of my uh, favorite things have a, a real cheesy taste that I can throw in some mozzarella, and I, I do it. I, I don't even play with it. I don't mess around with it one bit. If I feel like it needs cheese, I'm going to put on some cheese. So that's what I'm going to do next, and then I'll prepare the plate. Okay, in between videos, I'm not even going to lie. I tried it. I already ate a whole pork chop. It was good. This is how I'm going to lay it down. You know, two to three per person, I guess. Uh, I like the boudin, so it's not enough to have it in there for me. I like to have a little more, so we're going to throw down another little serving here on the side. Of course, we got to do some veggies. You know, make it a square meal. Got some broccoli here I've been cooking as all. Well. Throw that down here, right alongside everything else. And I like to put a honey mustard on the uh, the pork, but I like it sparingly, so I'll just throw it here on the side and kind of add it when I need it. Especially if you're having guests or you're doing this for somebody else, it's probably the better thing to do than to just lace the top of it and just expect that they're going to like it. And uh, this includes my rolled pork chop. Ta-ta!